try the question first before moving on. What we're going to do is to draw a free body diagram of the box in part A of the question. It turns out there are four forces acting on the crate. We have the gravitational force acting down on the crate, which we've labeled as mg. We have the surface pushing up on the crate, which is known as the normal force and is labeled n. We have the applied pushing force that the diagram has labeled f. And then we have the kinetic frictional force, which is pointing to the left because it's going to point in the direction opposite to the motion of the block. So if the block is moving to the right, the kinetic frictional force will move against that direction to the left. After drawing the free body diagram, we want to make the following very important point. If any force acts at an angle, you need to break it into its components. Now, there is only one force that's acting at an angle, and hopefully you can see that it's the applied force that we have marked as F. The question indeed states that it's acting at a 20 degree angle to the horizontal. And so what we want to do is break that force into its components. The other three forces do not need to be broken into their components because they are already pointing along either the y-axis or along the x-axis. So let's make an attempt to break the force F into its x and y components. Now if this angle here is 20 degrees, it turns out that that angle right there is also 20 degrees. And with that in mind, we would have a y component of F sine of 20 and the x component as f cosine of 20. If you have any questions about where those come from, please let me know in the comments. After breaking that force f into its x and y components, I recommend that we erase it from the diagram because we really only need to be working with the x and y components, not the resultant force itself. So let's go ahead and erase that force. We are now prepared to apply Newton's second law to the block which of course states that the sum of the forces is equal to ma. We will note that the question states that the crate is being pushed along at a constant speed. Well, constant speed suggests that the acceleration is equal to zero. So the term right here will end up being zero because mass times zero acceleration would overall be zero. So we can rewrite this law. Now, this law is applicable in both the x and the y direction, so we can write those out separately. We can begin with the sum of the forces in the x direction. Notice that there are a couple of forces there. There is the F cosine 20, which is pointing to the right and is therefore positive. And then there is Fk, the kinetic frictional force, which is pointing to the left and is therefore negative. We can fill those in. Let's recall that F was stated in the question as being 300 newtons, so we can make a substitution there. And then if we add the kinetic frictional force over to the other side, we would see that Fk has a value of 300 cos 20, which is about 282 newtons. So that's a result that we're going to hold on to. Let's turn to the sum of the forces in the y direction. Note that there are a few forces there. You have the upward normal force, and since it's upward, it'll be positive. You have the downward F sine 20, which will end up being negative, and then the downward Mg, which will also be negative. Note again that F was given to us in the question as being 300. Also note that Mg was stated as 1,000. Now that doesn't mean the mass was 1,000. That means the entire product, Mg, is equal to 1,000 newtons. Sometimes a question will give you the mass separately. They might say that the mass is, I don't know, maybe 10 kilograms or something like that. So then you'd have to plug in 10 kilograms times 9.8, which is the value of G. But in this case, they've already done that work for us, so to speak. In other words, the value of mg entirely is 1,000. And then when you add this term and the 1,000 newtons over to the other side, you should calculate a normal force of 1,102 newtons. Now, it's going to turn out that we can find the coefficient of kinetic friction by using the normal force and the kinetic frictional force, and here's why. We know that a kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Well, if we divide both sides of this by the normal force, we can see that mu k is simply the kinetic frictional force divided by the normal force, and we have both of those. So all we have to do is fill in the 282 newtons that we found earlier for the kinetic frictional force and the 1102 newtons that we found for the normal force, and mu k will turn out to equal approximately 0.256. And it's a unitless quantity because you had newtons in the numerator, newtons in the denominator, those will both cancel. So there is our answer for part A of the question. For part B of the question, we're looking at a different picture and therefore a different free body diagram, which we will draw right now. 
we essentially have the same forces acting on the crate, except in this case, the applied force F is acting again at a 20 degree angle, but in a different direction. So we've labeled that accordingly in the free body diagram. As before, we need to break F into its X and Y components. And then as before, once we have the X and Y components of F, we can erase the resultant F force because we really just need to be working with the components. We'll proceed next on to Newton's second law in the X and Y directions. Notice that in the Y direction, we still have the sum of the forces equaling zero, and that's because the crate is not accelerating in the Y direction. However, the crate is indeed accelerating in the X direction, so we have to leave the MA term into the formula. We'll begin with the sum of the forces in the Y direction. We have the normal force and F sine 20, both of which point upward and are therefore positive, and then we have the downward MG, which will be negative. We can fill in all the known values. Remember, MG was 1,000. And when you solve for the normal force, you should get approximately 897 newtons. That is a result that we're going to hang on to and use in just a moment. We turn next to the sum of the forces in the x direction. We have a couple forces in the x direction. We have F cosine of 20, which is pointing to the right and is therefore positive. And then we have the kinetic frictional force, which points to the left and is therefore negative. Let's recall that FK, the kinetic frictional force, can be replaced with mu K multiplied by the normal force. Now we have practically every known value. We know F, we know mu K from our previous calculation, the normal force we just picked up, and also the mass is known, but just in sort of an indirect way. Recall the following, that the weight of an object is equal to the mass times G. If you divided both sides of this equation by G, you would see that weight divided by G is equal to mass. Recall that the weight of the crate was given to us as 1,000 newtons. So if we filled in 1,000, divided by G, which is 9.8, that would give us the correct mass. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's fill in all the known values. You can probably simplify that on your calculator and simplify the left side on your calculator. And when you solve for A, you should end up with approximately 0.51. And the unit of acceleration, of course, is meters per second squared. As always, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And don't forget that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen.